I like the writing aspect because they are going to communicate in so many different ways. Right. And now is the time to teach them the proper way to communicate. Mm -hmm. And it's not just learning your letters. It's how you put those letters together in a way that is um, clear, legible, and gets to the heart of the manner, matter without offending the other person. Mm -hmm. This is April, and today we are going to be doing another Charlotte Mason video. These are what you have been asking for. Sh uh, Charlotte. <laughs> April was the gal that I contacted, what, a year ago? Two, I think we're on two years ago. I think now. it's two years ago. Yes. And I said, you do Charlotte Mason? Yes. Let me have your wisdom. <laughs> yeah. I don't know how much wisdom I've got. <laughs> <laughs> and, of course... Then I saw all the wonderful artwork she does with her writing, and it kind of just spiraled from there. And then every week I'd get on and be like, okay, what about this, and what about that? But today I came here and asked April if she would talk to us about writing, especially since it seems like a lot of people right now, when they're jumping into Charlotte Mason, it's the kindergarten level, so it's like yeah, everything, yeah. okay, let's do our written narration and this and that and this. Right. And, uh, you know, people like me, um, <laughs> and you're like, stop. Yes. Don't do that before seven. So why is that? So, yeah. I personally believe, and Charlotte Mason was pretty, um, pretty strict about this as well, that children up until the age of seven are still children. They're still learning manners, and they're still learning all the things that, will make them good citizens later, so um, how to be obedient and how cleanliness. To, and cleanliness and how to interact, these kinds of things. And we call those, what? The, the moral habits. The moral habits. So If we want to get technical. If we're going to get technical. Um, so they're still learning those. They're not not learning things from you. They're learning to cook. They're learning math. They're learning to recognize letters even though they're not writing them. My kids could recognize Walmart because they saw the <laughs> sign. I mean, they knew what a W was, right? Because, oh, that's Walmart, so W is Walmart. So these are things that they're recognizing all around them. So you're teaching them on a regular basis. Play is learning. So they're still learning from each other, right. from you, while they're playing. So don't think that if they're they're too late when you hit seven years old. The reason, and at least the biggest reason for me, is that at seven, they have two things. One, they have better fine motor control. And this is particularly important for boys because they tend to lag behind girls on the fine motor control. April has three boys. I, I three think boys. I should have mentioned that. <laughs> this is important for those of us yeah. trying to do Charlotte Mason. It's easier with the girls. It's harder, harder with, with the boys. It is a little bit harder with the boys. They. Um, because they don't have that fine motor, motor control. And the second is, they just can't sit still. Ha! Um, girls have that problem too, but boys really have that mm. problem. Especially my boys. They, they're they yeah. pretty active. So, um, so when they're seven, they're just about ready to transition from um, kind of um, atmosphere of the home type learning mm -hmm. to actually classroom type of learning right so that is when you want to start having them um, write and in not and when I say write I actually mean uh, learning their letters how to hold the pencil um, very slowly migrate them into handwriting practice which we call copy work and copy work can be anything from pieces of um, the books that you're reading together, right. or verses. I was gonna say Bible verses. Bible verses are great for that. Um, and and you stress with me with Stephen because I would be like, we've been spending 15 minutes on this, and you're like, why? Right. There was a huge stress on how much time to spend on this. Right. 15 minutes is too much. Um, 10 minutes <laughs> or less. The the point is to get them to do it perfectly. So if it takes them, if if they're rushing through it and it's messy, stop. Don't have them do that. 
emphasize that you want one perfectly written mm -hmm. word, one perfectly written letter. And if it takes you the rest of the school year to get through the alphabet, but written perfectly, then that's what you need to do. Right. So if they are, if you are stressing about writing handwriting, if they are balking at it, they don't want to do it, it may very well be because you're putting too much emphasis on it. You're, it's taking too long. So pull it back, do shorter periods of time. Eventually they're going to get it. Mm -hmm. They're using their hands all the time. Um, right. Boys, their handwriting's a little bit sloppier in the beginning. So perfection for them is a little bit harder than it is for girls. Of course, that's kind of a blanket statement. It's not always true, but for my right. boys it was. Well, we saw we saw the progression of Steven. You know, right. you, you were the one that pointed out, hey, look what he started out with, look where we are now. Right, and he did. He made a huge progress from the beginning of the school year until um, the end of the school year, just using a very simple um, italics type of handwriting. So. Mm -hmm. So this is what we used. I'm going to have to kind of go like this. And that was all you. That wasn't me. I was just like, you're going to teach us handwriting? Fantastic. I will bring coffee. <laughs> and she did. <laughs> I was fully caffeinated all year. <laughs> yeah, so I chose Spencerian. I think Spencerian is a really beautiful uh, font. It's there, There's about a gazillion ways to write your letters. Mm -hmm. um, Italics is possibly the most common, particularly for um, homeschoolers. Uh, there's quite a few out there. Um, the Getty Dubai is probably the most popular one, and it's italics. Okay. Um, beautiful handwriting for children is the one that I actually used with Stephen. And okay. I started my kids out on that too. And once they had mastered that, which is basically all the forms, and it goes from, and what I really like about it, is that the um, the block letters move right into the cursive letters, and so all you have mm -hmm. to do is add the tails. And, and he still writes that way. I mean, we've right. had other things that, and he's still like, no, because he learned perfectly. Yes, and so um, so that's actually really easy. And, and if you have children that are coming late to cursive handwriting, then italics is probably your best bet. That's a good point. So it's easier. I had I had one child that came to me and he was fourteen and he had he knew he had horrible handwriting. He mm -hmm. wanted to improve. So I started him on italics because it's the it's easiest to learn. And it's um, very easy to read once you do learn it. That's true. Yeah, the easy. Spencerian easy. is yeah. a little bit more complicated. And um I it's a little bit of that. Yeah. yeah. So if you ever um if you can look up Spencerian uh, penmanship online, and you will see some very old-fashioned typewriting where you have um, the thick edges and then the thinner edges, and a lot of this is considered uh, calligraphy, what we would consider calligraphy And is this today. making a comeback with all the planners and the bullet journals? It very much is. That is what we would call modern calligraphy, where mm -hmm. they're actually breaking the rules of calligraphy, where they're bouncing their letters and making them different sizes. Is Not that twaddle? That, is that twaddle color? It would be twaddle for <laughs> handwriting, I guess. Um, if you understand mm -hmm. why you're doing it, that's one thing. But mm -hmm. if you are if you don't know how to um, to use your pen or to make the letters correctly, that's something else. Uh, so modern calligraphy tends to have a lot of curly cues in it. Um, mm -hmm. The ornate writing that you see, um, not so much with Spencerian, although it does have some of its capital letters um, are pretty ornate. Uh, what we think of as calligraphy, old time calligraphy, is the copper plate. Okay. And that's like the Constitution. Um, no, it would be uh -huh. like if you saw the calligraphy birds. Okay. Uh, birds yeah. made from calligraphy, yeah. though that's what I'm talking about. Okay. And those letters tend to be incredibly, incredibly ornate. And my kids and they yeah. actually have pretty good handwriting. I bet. Except my eldest son. He has horrible yeah. handwriting. I think he has horrible handwriting. Everyone else thinks it's okay, but it's just it because he was me in public school the first years of his life. He was, poor kid. <laughs> <laughs> I pulled him out as soon as I could. I'm just kidding. So, you know that, right? I do know that.
Okay. He he's doing pretty pretty good. He is. I love him. Um, but I think that having good handwriting is an indication of communication and how well you can communicate. Mm -hmm. It makes it easier. That. Yeah. So, for example, my youngest son, who has just started doing a lot of written narration this year, will have his work handed back to him because I can't read it. Uh, and how old is your youngest? He is 10. Okay. He's 10 and a half right now, actually. Um, the older boys have learned better, although the older boys are actually starting to use um, Google mm -hmm. and Google Docs. Uh, so because they're doing lots and lots of narration, so they, they all have right. larger essays. So I allow them to do that. But things like um, writing out their memory verses or mm -hmm. writing out poetry, then they use their good hand. We call it the good handwriting, which is their cursive. Well, and that's a good point because we're, the, I feel like there's such a huge thing with Charlotte Mason that it has to be old-fashioned. Everything that has to, um, we have to almost step back. And rather than right. making it adaptations for our current times, like a computer. Right. I mean, this is a good tool. Let's not waste it. Right. We, and we integrate the computer as much as we possibly can. Um, but I be centered. But it, it, right. But you can't pretend it's not there. I mean, you go out into the real world. Isn't that what Charlotte Mason is all about, being a good citizen? Mm -hmm. You go out into the real world, computers are in the real world. Right. And... So they need to be good digital citizens, and so that is actually a step that you need to start integrating in our day and age. Mm -hmm. And that's not something Charlotte Mason ever dreamed that right. way, that she would have to integrate into right. her curriculum. But for us today, we absolutely need to be good digital citizens mm -hmm. as well as good, you know, real life citizens. I guess I don't know. Do you see why I love her so much. <laughs> <laughs> um, but using the computer is not a bad thing. I think there's a fine line between um, using it exclusively mm -hmm. because there is a lot of twaddle uh, online. And or Wait, let me get my phone. Oh, no, I'm uh, yeah. kidding. <laughs> so my my eldest just finally got a phone when he turned 16, and oh, it was really that. hard for us to give him one. That would be hard. That I I don't, I don't want to think about that right now. Yeah. So, but my my youngest does. He asked for a Kindle. For Christmas. He wanted one. It was yeah. on sale, so we, that's why we got him. And you know what? I have control over it. Everything mm -hmm. is parent, you parent control. control. Do that. We also, they all have their own computers because when we, we actually, when we started, mm -hmm. we started not homeschooling so much as we were doing like um, the charter? K, the, like the charter stuff okay. online, which is basically public school at home. And we hated it. Or mm -hmm. I hated it. It made my middle son cry. It was awful. Mm. So I finally just said no. Well, that makes sense why you would go to a Charlotte Mason because isn't that what a lot of people end up transitioning to? They're so frustrated and I was like, there's got to be a love for learning out there. Right. And Charlotte Mason kind of basically says, here you go. Right. I don't know if everybody does, but well, I, I was looking for something really specific. And for me because we do love to read, and mm -hmm. I wanted to make sure that my kids had a love for reading. There was a lot of books that um, I wanted them to have in their repertoire when they graduated. Mm -hmm. And it also had to be really cheap because we just <laughs> didn't have a lot of money. We yeah. still don't. So um, when I was looking for curriculum, Ambleside Online came up, and it really is. It's a wonderful curriculum. Mm -hmm. It was horribly confusing. It was it was overwhelming actually and it took me about a year and a half, two years to actually figure it out. Mm -hmm. And so we actually went to Simply Charlotte Mason and followed quite a bit of what, um, bit of their cur curriculum. Do you find um, that it's um, simpler? You know, they take a For different me. approach, but okay. yes, it is. It's much simpler. Well, they emphasize portions of history that, while important, mm -hmm. I didn't feel were um, as important as other parts of history. Mm -hmm. um, I feel that a um, Christ-centered curriculum is really important, mm -hmm. but we also need to, well, we need to get a whole view of history. Mm -hmm. And Oh, I agree. And at the same time, so you know why something in Europe was going on at the same time as what was going on in South America. Mm -hmm. But you don't get that if you follow the straight Ambleside 
they um, online. So you actually, um, there's a couple different Charlotte Mason uh, inspired curriculums out there, and I've pretty much kind of patched mine together from that. So which is why I still call me and say, "What yeah, do you I know. do? Yeah, what are you doing this year? Uh, I am there. I'm not figuring it out. <laughs> oh, <yeah. laughs> not I know yet. I'm doing American history. That's as far as I've gotten. Uh, American history should be integrated every year. Mm -hmm. um, if you start with like George Washington's world, mm -hmm. and, Genevieve Foster. Yeah, Genevieve Foster. Those are really wonderful books. And actually, there's enough in there that I think you could probably stretch it over two years. I would, I would think so. Um, I have the George Washington and Abraham Lincoln. Yes, I have those. We have the Augustus Caesar as I well. That one. I don't have Captain John Smith. That's and I don't have Captain John Smith either, but I have the Augustus Caesar, and I liked all of them. Dicks. And then we mm -hmm. had we yeah. want, we read all the Dolera books, and mm -hmm. we did all the isn't that Beautiful Feet? Isn't beautiful Feet. feet. Okay. We did, and then we did Beautiful Feet, which was the mapping with um oh what were they Miss Men of the Mississippi Men of the Mississippi. There, you, of go. The Mississippi. there you go. Okay, that series of books. Plus, I got Battle to the Sea. Right, I Paddle did that to the one. Sea. Okay. So all those books, we did all those books, but I also got the maps from Beautiful Feet, so we kind of splurged a little bit and got the big maps. Story to the uh, story of the world, the whole series. Love, love those. Love, love, this, that we love those books. So Joseph, this year, um, my youngest son, who's ten, I think he's in year five, five okay. or six. I can't remember which. Anyway, his focus is um, human geography, so okay. culture, cultural geography oh, is what I it is. And so instead of focusing on specific periods of history, he's mm -hmm. actually looking at the different cultures around the world. Oh, which, like and, and really integrating um, the maps and learning um, how, mm -hmm. how to find your way around on a map, which is really important. Anyway. The, whole, the whole point is a whole teaching of the child. It's spiritual, physical, mental, emotional, and you you get an opportunity to feed every bit of them. Mm -hmm. um, I like the writing aspect because they are going to communicate in so many different ways. Right. And now is the time to teach them the proper way to communicate. Mm -hmm. And it's not just learning your letters, it's how you put those letters together in a way that is um, clear, legible, and gets to the heart of the manner, matter without offending the other person. Mm -hmm. And being able to explain yourself and getting them to understand what it is that you, you're trying to say. Right. And that, Concise. And, right. And it's incredibly important and it's a skill that doesn't seem to be taught anymore. Yeah. Right. We're talking about So, um, that's And then not we... before seven because of the development of... I, right. child. So this is a child center education. It's, I say it's child led or um, child directed rather than child led because Montessori is kind of whatever the child wants right. we're going to cater to whereas Charlotte Mason said here's a child he needs to be an adult let's guide him towards that. Right and they're already people they already have their own personalities yeah. so they're not a blank slate. Mm -hmm. So you as a parent have the privilege of being able to see where they're at. If a child is not seven, they're six, five, and they seem to have this need or ability to be able to write and communicate, go ahead. But if they're eight or nine years old and they're still struggling, don't worry about it. They're not going to go to college or trade school or go into the military, whatever it is they're going to do as an adult, and not be able to write. <laughs> the ability comes. Right. Just as long as they can, they can start identifying the letters and they can narrate what they're hearing mm -hmm. from stories and eventually that, that they start reading, are able to read and be able to do that narration, eventually they'll be able to write their letters and be able to communicate. Some kids like it more than others and that's just, you know, a kid thing. It yeah. just depends on the, the child. personality. It, yeah, yeah, and it is. It's a personality. There, It's a whole child approach. It's not just a blank slate or, you know, different yeah, different ages. They have they can do different things. No. You have to look at them as a whole child. Yeah. I like that. 
Alright, well I'm going to have to end it here and um, give this video a thumbs up if you want April to come on again. <laughs> and I will bribe her with coffee. Always. And <laughs> um, she is going to be starting her own channel, especially with writing. Yes. And how pens and all this fun stuff. And she has a blog. It's all going to be linked down below and you're going to want to check it out. And any other videos that I have is going to be linked at the end in a playlist, so you can just click that. If you are new to my channel and you want to see more from me, just mm -hmm. click my face that's going to pop up anytime now. And it's going to subscribe to you so you can see more videos. And until next time, bye. <laughs> are you kidding? All this end stuff is great to put at the end. Oh, that, that <laughs> and people that are laughing. For reels. Yes, everybody's laughing. Okay. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs>